Hello again everybody and welcome back to the Red Flag 16-2 campaign for the DCS World F-15C. We're on mission number two. This is a local area checkout, so it's going to be an orientation of the Nellis Nevada Test and Training Range airspace with enough other stuff going on that it's going to serve as a very, very good warm-up for the full-up Red Flag missions to come. It's actually even just being an orientation more complex than any DCS mission you're likely to run into, so this could be an interesting campaign. Now I have the briefing package up with the map to the right to serve as a visual aid as we go through this, and I have a download link in the video description to the entire package if you want to go through it for yourself. In full, I'm going to hit the highlights and then get into some more details down below. So. For everyone already here, today is going to be about getting to know the MOAs, the military operating areas, and the R's, the restricted airspace. And we can see the MOAs outlined in gray on the chart. The restricted airspace would be the ones outlined in green. Those are the ranges themselves. Now, I'm going to be flying as the flight lead of a two-ship with our squadron weapons officer on my wing. So today we're going to be staying below 15,000 feet above sea level so that we don't clog up the airspace for any other cappers, combat air patrol aircraft, other F-15s flying in the area. And there is one area known as the farms that we are not allowed to overfly at less than 6,500 feet. Otherwise, it results in noise complaints. And that's going to be up here. Yeah, you can see the red area. You see a lot of these little red areas around the map. Those are just, well, like it says here in the, the briefing, areas where there are altitude restrictions and we're going to observe no lower than 6,500 up here around the farms by steer point 9. Now, getting into the mission summary, okay, so for almost all of the missions, the bullseye is going to be at steer point 5. So we can see steer point 5 out here is the bullseye at Mount Helen. Last mission was steer point 1. I just need to remember to step from steer point 4 straight to steer point 6 when I'm doing my navigation. And at the completion of the tour, we'll reset to the northern east west cap for a short vol time of 20 minutes. So we're going to stay on. Yeah, this cap right here between steer point 13 and 14 for about 20 minutes after we fly the route up to that point. And then down here as element lead, I'm going to taxi behind the first four ship. And then on departure, I'll stay in a trail formation using the radar to stay about two nautical miles behind the lead. And then, yeah, the flight lead is going to point out landmarks and feed us some other information. On exiting the Sally Corridor, this will be right up here at Texas Lake, steer point four. We'll go slightly northeast to enter Caliente Bravo for marshalling. And then from there, mission specific briefing will tell us what to do. So from four to six, okay, so I'm going to take that to mean that we just sort of hold at steer point six and then await further instructions and then fly the rest of the route. Okay, so we're expecting the weather to be good. So expect a visual approach back to Nellis. Okay, sounds good to me. Then it has some landmarks that are going to be pointed out. All of these, well, I think it, with the exception of Worthington Peak, I pointed out and talked about during the Nevada Test and Training Range tour videos that I did. So it should be very familiar once we get up there and start to look around and have this information passed to us. Okay, now the tactical portion of the briefing. We'll use this time to practice radar work against Golmers to the west and also protect strikers as they arrive on range. I'm expecting F-15Es, A-10s, and Tornado GR-4s from the RAF to be pushing in. I would imagine that's Dodge and Uzi. I'll get a better picture of what the call signs are on the lineup car. So Intel, our Eglin Eagles maintain two barrier caps, Chevy flights, and that's going to be up north, Chevy 1 cap, and down south, Chevy 2 cap. Intel reports that Russia continues to fly Suko 27 and MiG-29 cap flights west of the FIBA, principally in the range 74 and the Paiute Alpha airspaces, so basically the same area that we saw them on the last mission. Now the ground track of the Fencer flight is important because Intel, and this is referring to the Fencer flight that was shot down in the last mission, it's important because Intel believes that there may be Russian special forces operating in the area of the farms up here by steer point 9, and it is believed that the Fencer overflew this location in order to download intelligence or upload intelligence from these soft teams by means of an in-flight data modem, which is very cool, and it's telling me here, as such, do not overfly the farms lower than 12,000 feet MSL. It was 6,500 up top, but I'm going to observe the most restrictive, which is 12,000. Yeah, there's no reason for me in an F-15 to be any lower than that in either case. Now, we're still awaiting arrival of AWACS, which we expect to arrive within about 12 hours or so. So again, we're going to be without AWACS support and just be relying on radio calls and our own radars to scope out the area. Now, the Russian Federation continues to deploy surface-to-air threats to the border, and we now have imagery and signals intelligence that confirms SA-19, SA-10, SA-15, and SA-11, which corresponds to what we were seeing on the RWR on our last mission. Now, mission objectives, become familiar with the landmarks, maintain air superiority, protect other aircraft, and use the volt time to practice radar work, and maintain cap until relieved by 
Ford 5 and Ford or Ford 6. So Ford 4 is a four ship of F-15s and we're going to be Ford 4 1. Although I could have swore it just told us we were going to be a two ship, but okay. I'll take that as is and then we're relieved by Ford 5 and 6. We'll enter the Ukrainian airspace from the north and east. So we're going to have Hog Flight up as A-10s. Colt Flight is going to be Tornado GR4s. Last time Colt was F-16s. Dodge Flight is going to be F-15 Strike Eagles, F-15Es. And these flights will transit to the east of our cap, going down the south of the corridor and recovering at Nellis, okay? Joker and Mingo fuel. So 7,000 and 4,500 before I need to worry about recovering due to fuel constraints. Okay, so taxi standard, just taxiing out, like I said, behind the first four ship. So take off all standard, in route objects, formation, fence, in procedures, all standard. Airspace time, 1620 local, so it's going to be an afternoon mission with Bullseye again at steer point five at Mount Helen. Okay, recovery is exactly like it was last time, and DCA volt time 20 minutes from 1654 to 1714 local. ROE still restricted to only responding to a hostile act, and I'm still going to play it as if I have a restriction in place where I need to visually or through the NCTR system identify a target before taking it out. And then clouds as briefed, yeah, scattered Cirrus 30,000 MSL, controls at 28, identical to last mission. And then once we're on cap, 25 to 29,000 at around high subsonic 0.9 Mach. So I'm going to read through all of this one more time or a couple more times on my own just to make sure that I grasp everything that's going on here. It, again, is for an orientation mission about as complex a setup as you would ever see in a DCS mission. Okay, so coming over to my data card, let me see, we have done for us here. Max abort speeds of 148 on the takeoff roll. Takeoff speed 164 with a single engine takeoff speed of 197. And come to think of it, I don't think, no, I'm sure somewhere here on my drive, I have like an F-15 flight manual that would allow me to compute all this stuff. That's awesome that they include that there. So I won't just be guessing on the takeoff like I would usually do in the F-15. Takeoff distance, 2,600. We have 10,000 feet of runway at Nellis to work with, so no sweat at all, and if I do come in for a heavy landing, expected landing roll would be 5,700 feet. Yep, four ship, four, four, one, with two, three, and four is the wingman, and everything else is exactly as briefed, so with that, I will see you in the cockpit. And we'll pick things up on the ramp at Nellis. Let me bring the lineup card up real quick to make one clarification to the briefing. I'm going to be four, three, one, and my wingman to my right is going to be Ford 32. Ford 41 and Ford 42 are going to be these two aircraft in front of us. So it's a two ship that I'm following out. So as soon as they taxi, I follow them and follow these guys in two mile radar trail. Also, takeoff time 1620 is what I was expecting the first time around. It's 1605 right now. But what's going to happen is as soon as I unpause, these guys are going to start up and taxi and I need to be right behind them. So let me unpause. We'll listen into a quick briefing from WAGS and in the background, I'll get things Go in and be ready to taxi. Good afternoon, Fords. Welcome to this red bus tour of the Red Flag Range. I was here last year, so I have the joy of being your tour guide. After departure, we'll head west and then north up the southern corridor to the Red Flag Range, and then do a clockwise route over the blue side of the range, where I'll call out landmarks that we use often during the exercise. Once we are airborne, we'll start the tour. Okay, sounds good. So I've got the canopy closed, power on the aircraft. I have. Done a whole lot of stuff here, but I've got a good start going on. I thought I had both engines up and running. But okay, let me go left or right alt home and get engine number one up and running now as well. Okay, there's a good start progressing on both engines. Okay, so let's see here. I've already requested startup clearance. Let me request taxi. And that's Chevy 1, F-15 flight on cap, calling on station Bulls 061 for 70. Same position as the caps on the last mission. Clear for startup, winds 2705 as expected, more or less as expected. Okay, there goes 441, and that's a good start on two, and good start coming up on one. There goes 442, and as soon as I get this start complete, I'll taxi right behind them, taxi clearance or not. Okay, good enough. Let me go ahead and taxi on out. Yeah, the first, well, I guess actually the first couple of times I attempted to get this to go right, I was perfectly willing to wait out that 1620 takeoff time, but next thing I know, these guys are in the air and giving me radio calls, so yeah, that's when it kind of dawned on me. I need to get going myself, but yeah, I think there's going to be an update to the campaign that's going to include some tweaks to call signs in the lineup card and some of the timing uh, things like this. So yeah, what you're seeing here may or may not 
represent the final version of the campaign. Okay, I'm just going to obviously blow off the RMD arm areas up here. I had one back behind me, another one coming up on my left, but I'm just going to take the left straight out to Taxiway Alpha and take it on faith that the arm procedure has gone as planned. I would have had weapons crews pulling pins. I would have had crew chiefs looking for hydraulic or fuel leaks, unexpected hydraulic or fuel leaks. Some hydraulic and fuel leaks are just always going to be there a little bit. And open panels, anything out of the ordinary on the aircraft as two is calling in taxi i'm just going to give this guy about 15 seconds and then go on the takeoff roll myself and i'll just do this as a rolling takeoff okay so i just need to get rid of the comms menu up there while i'm thinking about it i'll roll out on the center line and that is 15 seconds right about there so let's go ahead and throttle up just verify one more time i've got my canopy closed that's really the only thing that you stand by Okay, gotcha to my radar trail as briefed. Okay, so burners plugged in. Let me concentrate as I do a little bit of right rudder to maintain alignment. Let's rotate. As I finally have takeoff clearance. Let's go gear up. At ATC, I really don't don't bother to pay much attention nowadays. And there is a planned ATC revamp I'm looking forward to that's eventually going to make its way into DCS World 2. But yeah, until then, I rarely, if ever, use the ATC Okay, so RWR contacts, F-15s, and speaking of RWR, let me go ahead and get my radar up and running. And we'll, yeah, I'll lock these guys up once I come around, turn left here at the speedway, then we'll just follow the ridge up past Gas Peak, and then turn right to follow the Sally Corridor. And two is going to be a little bit behind, but two will be able to make that up, no sweat. Okay, gotcha. So we'll just keep it in a climb, following these guys on out to 15,000 feet. And I've just got the throttle. I'll go ahead and increase it to just full military setting, full power without afterburner. That should put me into a good position. I'll go down to the 10 mile scan on the radar. And I will roll out right about there. That's fine. Okay, that's that works. Okay, two is. Wheels up. Can't quite see him out there, but he's got to be right, like right there. Yeah, there he is. I see him coming past the past the end of the runway right now. Okay, gotcha. So radar contact at about seven, six and a half miles. Go ahead and lock this guy up. And yeah, I'm just going for a two mile radar trail, so I'll need to close the gap on these guys. And if I need to, or if I had been, I was thinking about this prior to getting airborne. If I needed to make up time, if I just got bogged down in the uh, taxi process with the startup. I could just sort of cut the corner up here. I could even fly just straight from steer point one to steer point three and make up, geez, five, seven minutes if I were behind, no sweat. And I might actually do that just to cut the corner because these guys are going to turn right and head up, head up the corridor. If they do, yeah, I will come across and cut into the corner a little bit. Okay, gotcha. That was that flight calling in, passing waypoint three. Okay, gotcha. So the side of the corridor is going to run just to the right of this ridge. So we have it's the sheep range. So we have a sheep peak and a well, I guess a quartzite a quartzite mountain and Hafer Peak up here. So yeah, cutting the corner and just saw put my nose in front of these guys and this will bring me on around I'm about four and a half miles right now this will put me yeah once I roll out a second time here this will put me pretty much perfectly into a two mile radar trail okay and there's two forming up on me so yeah this is progressing nicely okay month spike SD that's at SA11 radar out there that's at the expected location I'm looking past creature force base into the actually the FIBA would be out here just on the horizon in that direction Okay, so let me come on around and I can even pull the throttle in just a touch as I am at about three miles right now. I want to level out at 15,000 feet, so let me continue just in a gentle climb right here.
So I'm at two and a half miles, and we're going to be making a left turn up here where the bridge makes the elbow to the left as well. So yeah, we've got the course out there. And there will be a left-hand turn up to Texas Lake, Strip Point 4. I haven't even, yeah, I haven't even got into a navigation mode. So let me go ahead and step up to, I can just go ahead and step up to Strip Point 4. Off That's Texas right Lake. Okay, gotcha. So yep, Hayford Peak right down here below us. And Arrow Canyon. I'm assuming it's the... Yeah, I would assume it's the one that's closest to us, just sort of running, you know, like, in this direction, and then down into the low area. Yeah, very cool. Okay, 15,000 feet, I'll level up right there. And... Oh, boy, learning the F-15 again. Yeah, I've got to remember that when I go to the navigation mode that it turns off the radar, so I've got to turn it back on. But, yeah, I'm still tucked in there right at two miles, no sweat at all. Okay, Dodge 1, that is an F-15E flight, and I have, okay, a visual on a force ship up here. So that, that may be Dodge, or one of the Dodge flights coming from north to south, recovering down at Nellis. Okay, so the flight we're following is making a left-hand turn up to... Well, they called that waypoint 4. It was their waypoint 4, but it's going to be... That would have been my waypoint 3. Now I'm heading up to waypoint 4 up at Texas Lake. that we'll be able to see right... Yeah, it should be like right there. Okay, let me go ahead and make my left-hand turn. I'll tell you what, just so I can get some more situational awareness. You know, when a two-mile radar trail like this, I would... Or, you know, my understanding at least is that you would do it with the aircraft you're following locked, I'm going to drop the lock so that I can scan out and see what else is going on in the world. Yeah, there we go. I've got friendly contacts of four ship at about 20 miles coming straight at me, and I'll be able to pick them up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I can pick them up well, just barely since I know where to look right off my nose. And that's all I have for radar contacts out to 40. And I'll just leave it on a 40 mile scan for now. And same RWR picture, just early warning radars, SD for the SA-11. And I saw the BB for SA-10 up just earlier as well. So we'll, we'll let things progress here a little bit longer. 